Hey guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to talk about backend development and how you can become a backend web developer. So let's get started. First of all, you need to understand what backend web development means. What is a backend, right? So if you look at any of the web services or products that you frequently use, such as YouTube or Netflix or Facebook or Google, you know that we, we interact with the web app, right? Let's take YouTube. So you go to youtube.com or you go to the YouTube app on your mobile phone. You actually interact with what's called the front end of the app, which means that there's an application which has all the logic to, you know, show the thumbnails and show different videos, who, who uploaded these videos and how many likes do these videos have. And you can choose a video, you can watch it, you can play with the volume and you can slide, you, know, you can seek forwards and backwards and you can do all kinds of things on the front end, right? But the actual video itself, all the data about the videos and all of these hundreds of millions of videos and who uploaded these videos and what are the titles, what are the thumbnails, how many comments they have, all the comments, likes and other kind of data, all this data is not stored on your phone, right? It is not stored in the application. If it was, it would be impossible to store everything on your phone, right? So this data is coming from somewhere else, right? The front end is actually just responsible to show this data to you in a very user friendly and very beautiful way, right? That's the job of the front end. But the back end is where actually the magic is happening. It is handling all the data. There is a database somewhere. So let's say YouTube has a database somewhere in San Francisco, California. So the back end developers are responsible to actually build the server, which really reads the data from the database and returns it to you, to your front end, so that you are able to watch the video, right? So all this data, including the videos and the link of the videos, the comments, the likes, the metadata, who uploaded these videos, how many subscribers does this person have, and how many likes does this video have, all this data is stored somewhere in the database so that everyone, right, you, me, every one of us uses the YouTube application. We hit the same server and we ask it for the data, right? So if you want to look at X person, so you want to look at MKBHD's videos, right? So MKBHD's videos are stored in one place in the database. You know, I mean, if you go into the advanced aspects, the data must be replicated and stored in multiple places so that you get faster access to it. But the point being that it is stored in some database somewhere and the server actually reads it from the database and returns it to you depending on what you're requesting, right? So that's the job of the backend developer. So backend developer actually builds these servers and manages the database and writes APIs, which will actually enable you and your front end teams to read this data and to actually use that data in their products and services that they build online. So that is the role of the backend developer. And in order to become one backend developer, you will have to pick a language and a framework so that you can actually start building your backends with it, right? So some of the examples can be Java. Java is one of the most popular languages used for backend development. And there are some popular frameworks like Spring and Spring Boot and Hibernate and stuff like that. So you can use these frameworks to build a backend server. You know, you can interact with the databases. You can also learn databases, which we'll talk about later in this video. But yeah, so Java is one way to go. Then you can pick Python and you can use something like a Django or Flask to build your backend server. I think Django and Flask are really popular and really stable, well-known frameworks around the world, which are used by fantastic applications like Instagram, right? So Instagram backend works with Django and it's entirely a huge Django cluster running and serving all your Instagram requests, right? So Django and Flask are another Python based web frameworks that you can use. Then you can go with JavaScript. So it's definitely possible to run JavaScript on the server side using Node.js. And there are frameworks like Express and Meteor.js with which you can build fantastic high performing backends for uh, using JavaScript. So you can definitely pick up JavaScript and it'll be easier for you since JavaScript is also used on the front end. So if you want to learn one language with which you can do both front end and back end development, JavaScript is the way to go. And you can also check out a lot of other languages like PHP. There is quite a famous framework called Laravel and PHP is one of the most oldest and most popular languages to build backend frameworks. Now it's not used a lot, but it has been used over the years. It is still very much existent in a lot of backend services around the world. There are a lot of languages and frameworks that you can use to build backends, right? You can use Rust and Golang and Elixir and there's plenty of languages and new ones keep coming out every now and then. So there's really, you can just, all you have to do is pick one and start to learn it. You know, you want, the way to learn building backends is to actually build these backend servers, right? So you pick any framework, you just pick a language and a framework, try to read its documentation, watch a few tutorials online and try to build something, right? Try to build real projects. That's how you will learn. So you have to pick a 
project suppose you want to see if you can build a twitter right like a simple messaging system where you can post tweets and you can save tweets and delete and edit and all those kinds of things so you can build a back end you can pick any framework using pick any language and framework that i mentioned and you can also go to the cryo website and they have plenty of tutorials and there are plenty of resources for you to learn back end development and you can pick either one of them and just start building projects and i think that's the way to go the components of a backend are usually you know servers and you will apis api is basically an application programming interface which is a format with which you specify how to interact with your server right so you build a backend server you will provide some apis to the front end that hey this is the api this is how you access the resources that my backend provides so if you build a backend for tweets you can have a get tweet api right so you you have a get api which will take an id and which will return the tweet right so there are http methods there are several http methods that you can learn but the most famous and the most widely used ones are get post put and delete these are the basic ones right so get http get method is used to read data from the server post is used to create data on the server and put is used to update data and uh, delete is usually used to delete the data on the server right so these are some of the http methods that you use so your apis or your backend needs to provide apis to you know perform all these actions so i want to create a tweet i want to read the tweet i want to edit it i want to delete it right so these are called crud operations any basic backend system will provide all these four crud operations so that you can now say that okay i have built this backend server and it provides these crud apis and the front end can use these crud apis in any way that it wants and it's it's a uniform thing right all different front ends can be used like mobile app can use it web app can use it everyone can use it but your back end remains the same so you can build really nice apis and you can build an api for pretty much anything right the back end can handle all the logic and all the you know difficult stuff that it does like compression and you let's say you building an instagram there is image compression and you want to re- return images in different resolutions you want to de- uh, return optimized versions of these images and stuff like that so all that complexity can be handled by the back end and it can provide simple apis for the front end to consume so that the front end just reads the data and saves and deletes the data that's all the front end does right all this magic and all the processing is handled by the back end think of youtube right there are video compressions happening there video conversion happening each video is saved as different resolution and different file sizes right so that if you look at something in full hd or you look at the minimum resolution depending on your internet speed all those video files are served from the back end right so back end actually handles all this complexity and the front end all it does is it it asks the back end okay i want to watch this video return to me the data for this video right so the back end will handle all the magic and all this data all this logic is abstracted in the back end and the back end developers actually work on it right so you need to know all these things you need to know apis you need to know http methods you need to know databases right database is a big part of the back end so all this data is persisted somewhere right you're watching this video it has a title it has a certain number of likes it has some comments it has some channel who uploaded this video right so all this data needs to be persisted somewhere in a database so databases are used to save this data for pretty much forever right anything that goes on the internet gets stored forever because it is stored in some database and there are multiple copies of this database so that's why they say that anything you upload on the internet never goes out right so that's why you need to learn databases as well so there are two kinds of databases sql databases and no sql databases right sql or structured query language is the oldest and most widely used language for databases so database like mysql and sqlite and postgres sql and these kinds of things they are very popular and very widely used these are called relational databases because data is stored in terms of relations which are nothing but tables there are different tables you know that you can have a user table you can have a uh, you know videos table you can have a thumbnails table metadata table and in this table you you store information like id name date created date updated date so these can be different fields in the table that you can store in a relational database right and similarly you have no sql database which is a non relational mode so like i said in the relational database there are different tables and there are relations between these tables so in no sql database it's basically it's on a very high level it comes down to key value pairs right if you know how hash maps work and and if you know how dictionaries work you basically have a key and value mapping right so in a no sql database for example you can have a key which is the id right so if your id is abhi for example my instagram username is abhi and you, if you go to abhi and it will be mapped to my profile data right so if you if you look at the profiles table my id will be mapped to my profile data so all i have to do is query with the id and i'll get all the data back from the no sql database right so that is the premise behind no sql database this is the most basic explanation that i could give you 
about a NoSQL database, but there are very different. There are many different kinds of NoSQL databases, you know. So there are actually many different kinds of NoSQL databases, like document-based and you know, key-value and Cassandra DB, Dynamo DB. There are plenty of options in NoSQL as well, and you can actually go and pick something up. MongoDB is a good starting place, and I think it's a very, it has a very good documentation and very easy interface, very easy to pick up. So you can get started with MongoDB, or you can always go to the SQL route. And your SQL knowledge will never go waste. I think it's a very, very, very important skill if you want to become a software engineer. So you can pick up MySQL and start learning it and start building small projects with it, right? So yeah, that's pretty much it. If we quickly go over the same thing, you build the database. So you need to learn some database skills. You know how you how you how you query a database, how you create a database, and how you set up the tables and stuff like that. Then you need to build a way to query the database to get the data actually from the database, right? So front end needs to somehow get this data. Front end direct front end does not directly interact with the database in most cases, right? So there will be a back end server which will have all the APIs, very easy to use standard APIs that will help the front end access the data from the database, right? So the so the back end sits between the database and the front end. The back end will actually read the data. From the database and return it to the front end, depending on what the front end wants. So you need to learn API management, and yeah, that's pretty much it. You need to learn a backend language and a framework to build these APIs and to build all these abstractions. And you need to learn a database language so that you can actually read the data from the database and save it in the database and stuff like that. And you also need to learn version control, which is a very pro which is a very fundamental and very important skill for any software engineer, be it a backend developer or a frontend or a full stack developer, right? You need to learn version control, such as GitHub or uh, you know basically learn Git so that you are able to coordinate and collaborate with multiple people in the team. So if you can save your work and you can uh, you know because everyone will be working together, right? They will be doing their work. You will be working on something else on the same product. So you will be shipping changes. You will be pushing your changes. They will be pushing your changes. All of that is handled in one big place where your main copy, your master copy of your app is stored. So you need to learn version control and you need to learn Git to be able to collaborate with other engineers and to build a real world project. So version control is a very important skill to learn. And you can find the resources in the description below. I will link a lot of resources from Cryo and other websites on the description. So please read the description to find resources to any of the things that I mentioned in this video. And yeah, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching.